you're listening to the summary of the interview. For a link to the full-length episode, please check the description below. Disrupting the cow. This interview is about how factory farms, agriculture and land prices will be disrupted by precision fermentation. Welcome to another episode of Investing in Regenerative Agriculture, Investing as if the Planet Mattered, a podcast show where I talk to the pioneers in the regenerative food and agriculture space to learn more on how to put our money to work to regenerate soil, people, local communities and ecosystems while making an appropriate and fair return. Why my focus on soil and regeneration? Because so many of the pressing issues we face today have their roots in how we treat our land, grow our food and what we eat. And it's time that we as investors, big and small and consumers, start paying much more attention to the dirt slash soil underneath our feet. In March last year, we launched our Patreon community to make it easy for fans to support our work. And so many of you have joined as a member. We've launched different types of benefits, exclusive content, Q&A webinars with former guests, Ask Me Anything sessions, plus so much more to come in the future. For more information on the different tiers, benefits and how to become a member, check patreon.com slash regenerative agriculture or find the link below. Thank you. Today I'm joined by Catherine Tubb of Rethink X, the lead author of Rethinking Food and Agriculture 2020-2030, the second domestication of plants and animals, the disruption of the cow and the collapse of the industrial livestock farming. Welcome, Catherine. Yeah, so our report looks at how technology is going to converge and basically become cheap enough and good enough to transform how we produce protein. So this report is really about a protein disruption driven by economics. And essentially, we're going to be able to produce the same proteins found today in livestock by a method we call precision fermentation. And by 2025, this tech technology will be able to compete cost-wise with bulk proteins. And that this is the point where adoption is going to be able to tip and accelerate exponentially. And all that time costs are going to continue to improve. And ultimately, we see proteins as being five times cheaper by 2030 than existing animal proteins. And I guess the other point is not a single disruption, but multiple parallel disruptions across every single part of the cow, from the milk, the meat, the leather, the collagen. And these are all going to impact each other. And it doesn't depend on a kind of one for one substitution of the end product. This is an ingredient business to business led disruption. Yeah, so the best example of this is really milk. So if you think about if you take milk from a cow, only 3.3% of it is the protein. And I think another couple of percent is the fat. And if you think about how milk is actually used globally, a lot of the milk is actually kind of put down into the solids, the milk solids, and that's what's exported. So for example, New Zealand exports 70% of their milk as these solid exports. If you can make that at the same cost <laughs> anywhere in the world, that's going to completely obliterate New Zealand's export milk industry and therefore obliterate their dairy industry. And that's going to obviously have huge knock-on effects then once you take out the dairy industry, you take out kind of cheap meat and that's going to increase prices in the meat and then that's going to kind of drive investment and um, into the further kind of PF for precision fermentation for meat. Then that's going to kind of basically disrupt the whole cow particularly the cow industry is very on very operating on very thin margins as i'm sure people are aware there's a lot of subsidies going on so it's kind of very knife edge industry and that makes it very kind of susceptible to disruption and that's something we've looked at as you mentioned our previous report and this is kind of our bread and butter this is what we look at we look at disruptions technology driven disruption so precision fermentation is when you take microbes and basically kind of program them to produce anything you want and mainly proteins right so things like yeast fungi you'll be able to just program just as we do it's fermentation just as you, you do to make beer or sugar or kimchi or ketchup or wine or yogurt you know you're going to harness these microbes to be able to make any protein you want and what does it use as feed because these microbes need to eat so what do we need to feed them basically to create these proteins it's mainly sugar and then nitrogen um sugar from anything we eventually think that they'll be able to get carbohydrates from kind of biomatter. And does the the quality of the sugar of the material, because I think for now it will be mostly sugar, Yeah. And does that influence the outcome of the protein? Like So yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of microbes at the moment like to kind of bathe in the best possible sugar, the purest glucose, but that can change. It's just an efficiency question and a programmable question. And the big question on 
health, like what comes out of this process. I think we all know the incredible health issues of the industrial uh, factory farming system and, and what comes out of that. I, I, I don't think we can even call it meat, but what comes out of this, uh, probably it will be a big fight if we can actually call it legally meat. I mean, that, that's for a separate discussion. But in terms of health, what do you see where we're now and where we're like in, in five years? Uh, compared to the meat products you can now buy in the supermarket or the, the protein products because it could be milk as you said before i mean i think there's a d disease and nutrition question on health so disease obviously you're not going to have those kind of issues that you get with factory farming and then the sort of houses where you get a lot of contamination of the food so you know they've done um some tests i think on this the meat produced via kind of which is slightly different to precision fermentation but if you can produce meat it usually doesn't get the same bacteria and microbes that you have an issue with but then on the nutrition side obviously there is a bigger kind of question and people are still looking into that a lot um, but on nutrition i think the ability to kind of build up the products you know very personalizable nutrition questions that you need like based on the particular proteins that you may or may not need it's going to be extremely valuable you know we definitely say that it's going to be better because you're just not going to have that contamination that you get in the current system how do we prevent this enormous concentration that we have now especially in the the CAFO industry in the us where i think there are just a few producing all pork and just a few producing all chickens and they're actually mostly the same companies and also in the, in the beef industry there's an enormous concentration is there anything to say on that as a potential danger and, and what this movement could do for that yeah so this is really part of the point of our report right we want to kind of alert people that there are going to be choices to be made with this technology disruption and we really kind of advocate to ensure an open and transparent competitive market you know because we think that's critical to ensure competition you're basically unpacking the cow or the products coming out of the cow and taking obviously the most interesting ones first and that's not uh, the, the meat part. And, I mean, another exciting, well, uh, another interesting example, which I probably find as a mother more than anyone, is the fact that the idea that for formula milk for babies, instead of using kind of cow proteins, you could use human proteins, right? Which m might sound a little bit icky, I guess, in some ways, but if you had the choice, you know, and everyone has a choice of how they feed their baby, but if you decided to feed them formula milk, would you prefer them to have formula milk with human proteins or cow proteins? You specifically looked at factory farms in uh, the US. What does this mean for, let's say, the farmers and the workers in these industries? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's hugely disruptive. And again, you know, we're not, I don't want to soften this. As in, it, if what we say is true, then essentially, you know, there'll be millions of jobs lost because essentially, if factory farmers, we know it won't exist. We say, look, this disruption is coming and it's inevitable and you need to get on top of this and think about how you can support the farmers and workers. And what does this mean for the farmers that are actually mostly growing, if you look on average in the US, crops for animals? So what does this mean for rural, rural America? Yeah, I mean, there are huge impacts. We, I think we forecast something like almost 500 million um, acres of land will not be needed in the way that it is now to produce crops. So it's going to create these huge opportunities for farmers. I mean, obviously there's massive impacts such as land values could be decimated, right? They're gonna be disproportionately affected by this impact, probably a likely a rapid collapse in value, but you know. Which is something investors should take notice yeah. of because a lot of their models are based actually on land always has, like their real assets, they always have value. Exactly. And, um, you know, we've seen a precedent for that land drop as well, and value drop by more than 50%, I think, in the 20s and 30s, and then also another 40% in the 80s. So this has happened, so you can see a kind of disproportionate effect of land values. You just listen to the summary of the interview. For the full-length interview, please find the link in the description below. If you found the Investing in Regenerative Agriculture and Food podcast valuable, there are a few simple ways you can use to support it. Number one, rate and review the podcast on your podcast app. It's the best way for other listeners to find the podcast and it only takes a few seconds. Number two, share this podcast on social media or email it to your friends and colleagues. Number three, if this podcast has been of value to you and if you have the means, please join my Patreon community to help grow this platform and allow me to take it further. You can find all the details on patreon.com slash regenerative agriculture or in the description below. Thank you so much and see you at the next podcast.